Hey guys, welcome to today's show. We are talking about strength training for runners, a topic I absolutely love because an area where so many runners are missing the mark. And we know runners love to run. I think we can agree on that. However, most runners either don't like to strength train or they don't know where to start when it comes to strength training. And at our performance physical therapy clinic, we consistently see this time and time again as a major problem that's keeping runners from improving their running performance and preventing overuse injuries. These two go so hand in hand, it's not choosing one or the other, but those are the things that we see time and time again. And with the proper strength training program specific to you and your running goals, you can improve your running performance long-term by allowing you to get stronger, run faster, and avoid nagging injuries and setbacks. Listen up to today's show to learn what effective strength training principles that all runners need to consider to keep them running faster, stronger, and for more years to come. And I want you guys want to make a quick note too. We have, for those that aren't sure where to start, have a download here in the show notes, the five best strength training exercises for runners. So if you guys are really unsure on where to start, or you're looking for uh, some ways to tweak and improve your running performance, especially as it related to strength training, go ahead and uh, follow that link. It's a free download for you guys. We'd love for you to check it out. Now, in terms of where to... Uh, where to start with all this? We see a lot of runners at our physical therapy clinic. Inside Out Strength and Performance here in Carlsbad, California. This is a running mecca, Southern California. We are around a lot of endurance athletes, and these are some of our favorite people to work with. And most people, they're seeking us out for help with overuse injuries, for help with uh, things that they've developed, pain, uh, pain, chronic pain, acute pain, flare-ups come up, and it keeps them from running. And when people has, if you're a runner, you know, when you can't run, it is, it is more than just taking away your running or your fitness. It's your, it's your mental health. It's your stress relief. It's your community. There's so many things that go along with this. And that's why it's so important to have a strength training program that helps actually supplement your running. Because most runners we work with simply don't know what to do when it comes to putting together an effective strength training program that actually complements their running or endurance activities. There's too much overlap between these and not enough specificity for what people actually need when it comes to the right strength training. And if you're a runner that thinks of strength training as doing a bunch of high repetition and low weight exercises, or if you're only using body weight as your cross training activities, you're really leaving so much on the table as it relates to both longevity and performance. And I'm not saying you have to squat hundreds and hundreds of pounds but you do have to choose the right exercises at the right dosage at the right time for your running career to flourish, to feel good. And even if you're not a professional runner, which many of us, many people listening are not in that category, it's still, it's something you want to do for a lot of years to come. Then you have to make sure you're doing the right things in other areas to make sure that you are allowed the opportunity to do just that. Now, like I mentioned briefly before, you do not have to choose between pain and longevity or performance. If you're like, hey, I'm already feeling good. I don't have pain. I'm not worried about longevity. <laughs> Give it a few years and you might get there. But even if you're just looking to improve your performance, that'd be uh, run faster with speed work, that'd be uh, climbing hills, that'd be uh, just the ability to decrease your times, then this is important. And these have the same benefits, whether you're trying to chase away pain or whether you're trying to improve performance. So the cool thing is, is that you get both of those when the right program is implemented. Now, getting strong in the right areas will not only increase your chances of running pain-free and injury-free, which we're all about that, but the good news is, like I said, you'll see your times decrease as your speed and your running strength increases. When it comes to strength training, and this is what we see, we do a, an audit with all of, our, all of our runners that come in here, they're dealing with pain, they're dealing with overuse injuries. We wanna know, what does your training look like? What does your program look like? Is this a training issue or is this a, a movement issue, a strength issue, a mobility issue? And we wanna see where the, usually there's some, some overlap for sure, but we wanna see where the primary root cause is because most runners don't know how to strength train effectively and their workouts are designed to be hard, but not necessarily intelligent. And I'll say that again because they're designed to be hard, but not necessarily intelligent. Why is this important? Because if you're simply doing your strength training to 
break a sweat, to feel sore, to do these things, then you're going to, you're not getting the most out of your strength training. You're not actually supplementing your running. You're not improving imbalances. You're not addressing the areas that need addressing. And we see this when people, uh, runners, they're, they're already logging a lot of miles and then they talk about their strength training and they're doing things like high repetition burpees. They're doing thing like, like hit training classes, like things where they're working out at a pretty high intensity for an hour and not at, uh, you know, not in a strength training fashion, but more in a, a group class, high repetition hit style thing is not going to, not going to actually supplement your running. It's going to be challenging. It's going to feel tough. It's going to make it feel like there's progress, give the illusion of progress. But if we're talking long-term results, that has to change. And I know how difficult it is for runners to know what to do when it comes to strength training. I know there's no shortage of information out there. There's no shortage of resources out there that tell you that you need to do this or that. And it's even, even frustrating for runners of where do I find time to do all this? I, I, I'm already logging this many miles, especially the ultra runners we work with. They're logging a lot of miles. That takes a lot of time. And if you're working or managing a family and trying to do all that, then it can be hard to find the time in the day to even fit it in. But the good news is, is that it doesn't have to take long to be effective. It doesn't have to be overly complicated but it does have to be specific to what you need and it has to supplement what you're trying to do when it comes to your running goals. And the runners we work with, like I said, people come in all the time with overuse injuries as the primary reason of, of why people reach out. And these can be often Achilles issues, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, runner's knee, hip and low back pain, stress fractures when it's more significant. And the problem is that these are the majority of these injuries are sustained either during running or during training. Now that's that's more than a problem, that's that's an epidemic. This is, I'm talking over 80% of the people that come in to see us, injuries can be traced back to their training specifically. And that is, that's just, that's just wrong. That's just not effective, that's not sustainable, that's not the direction you wanna be heading. And it's never too late to flip that. The first step when people come in to see us with injuries, now if injury's been going on, the longer you let an injury go on, the longer it takes to get some of the pain, the inflammation, the other imbalances that have developed under control. But our first step is getting pain down when present. Then we're trying to restore proper movement patterns. This is usually a big underlying reason to why, why the injury might have occurred in the first place. If your ankles have terrible mobility, it's going to put a lot of stress on your knee. Same thing if your hips don't move the way that they should and they're not strong enough, that's going to affect your knee and your ankle, your foot, your Achilles, all those issues as well. So once we can restore proper movement patterns, get the pain down, then it's essential to make sure that we're addressing their strength training program to actually supplement their running. Now, way too many people, like I said, they're doing body weight exercises, they're doing hit style activities, and I'm not saying that this is wrong, but most runners we work with do benefit from more strategic strength work. So as, as we transition them from, okay, we're, we're out of pain, we're out of the rehab side of things. Now let's start building out your strength training program. Let's put together a program for you that actually works, helps keep you healthy, keep you feeling good, and also improves your running strength and your performance. We have people that come in to see us with pain and they leave saying, I have never felt this strong running. I've never, I, I ran hills for the first time in a while and I felt noticeably faster. My times were better. My splits were better. People coming in with pain issues and leaving with improved performance shows me, shows us time and time again, that pain and performance, you can work on both those from a longevity standpoint, from a performance standpoint, those can be worked on together. Now, I wanted to leave you guys with some, some practical tips here, some things to focus on. Uh, if you're putting together your own program, these are giving you some general principles. Again, if you guys want more specific laid out exercises, I'm not going to be talking about the specific exercises here today, but if you are interested in that, if you're looking for the actual, okay, what do I do? What actual exercises should I be performing? Head to the link in the show notes. There's a, a free download for you guys. It's our, the, the five best strength training exercises that we use for runners. And that will give you some specific guidance. So go ahead and check that out if you want more of the specifics. But today, going to be talking about some uh, very practical, uh, big, bigger picture strategies, things that you should be looking for in your program. So first, you want to make sure that you're lowering your repetitions and increasing the weight. 
this is this is hard for for runners to to swallow for a lot of reasons and and usually just because they don't have experience with it it's it's scary to increase the weight they're they're fearful of re-injury when actually by increasing the weight and getting stronger you're going to be more resilient to injury you're going to be uh, more able to protect yourself in the mileage that you're logging so that's the first thing is making sure that you're decreasing the repetitions and bumping up the weight now strength training uh, strength training as we know uh, true strength to be we you say is is less than six reps so if we're if we're talking actually building strength you can't be doing sets of 15 that's falling into the endurance side of things there's you know a little bit of flexibility on where that rep scheme can look like based on your training experience what you're comfortable doing uh, if you're looking to actually build some muscle mass then those reps can bump up a little bit higher but generally speaking let's call it a square a square number here five repetitions can be for your strength training movement is a very effective way to train strength and to do it at a little higher weight and now your accessory movements in your program so i'm not getting in the nitty-gritty of everything but your accessory movements can be a little higher in repetitions but for your main strength movement you can't be doing that at three sets of 15 and expect to actually get stronger in the right ways along with that make sure that you're prioritizing form so this is our second piece and this probably should be the first piece always prioritize form 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 first and foremost make sure that you're moving in a way that is training the right muscles there can be five people doing five different squats and training five different muscle groups and some can be stretching their knees more stressing their back more when some can be effectively building their quads their hamstrings their glutes and that all comes down to your form and being able to break down your form and move efficiently and effectively. So make sure regardless of whether you're doing body weight exercises, whether you're starting to increase the weight, the ability to prioritize form becomes essential. Now, third piece, make sure that your single leg movements are the majority of your program, especially if you're short on time. I love, I'm all about squatting. I'm all about full body compound movements, but things like lunge variations, single leg deadlifts, step ups, any kind of single leg work is going to be more effective for runners. Why is that? Because how much of running is done on one leg? 100% of running is done on one leg. You, you don't have two legs on the ground unless you're really shuffling and struggling. When you're running, 100% of running is done on one leg. So make sure that your training reflects that. Next piece, don't neglect the core and the shoulders. I see this a lot with runners. They focus so much on calf work and uh, quad glute work, which is, which is all great, but they neglect the core and the shoulders. Now for runners, core is where we start. Anyone coming in to see me with a running related issue, anyone trying to work with me with a running related issue, we're starting with the core and we're starting with the hips because those two guide how well you're running, how well your body's distributing and producing force, which is essential for runners. Now the shoulders as well. A lot of people come in with this forward rounded posture, this uh, shoulders pulled forward and that can cause shoulder issues over time. But more importantly, when we think about how effective do you need to be for running from an endurance side of things, you need good breathing mechanics. You need to be able to open your chest up and have the ability for your breathing to be done effectively. So make sure that you're not neglecting the core and not neglecting the shoulders. Next piece, make sure you train in multiple planes. And if you guys go check out the podcast from uh, last week, uh, on uh, when we did the, when I did this series on is your training balance and you can listen more there about how to train in multiple planes. There's three planes. We have our sagittal plane, which is forward back, our frontal plane side to side and our transverse plane, which is rotational. And now most people think of running as a straightforward and back activity, but in reality, it's very much rotational and it's very much controlling lateral forces. That's where, I see a lot of issues with the knee, with the ankle and feet. As you poorly control those forces, then it causes the knee and the ankle to roll in. Runners probably know that as overpronation. Uh, some of those things can be attributed to a lack of strength in the frontal and transverse planes. So again, I'm not going to, I can do a whole podcast. I did a whole podcast on this recently. So make sure to go check that out on how to find out if your training is balanced across multiple planes. Next piece. You do not have to be sore for it to be effective. And this is one of the uh, 
one of the, the big things, I've had some guest podcasts on this, uh, a friend of mine, us, uh, in one of the earlier episodes, if you look at No Pain, No Gain, that's an earlier episode we did, is a, is a great one that we talk about this. You do not have to be sore for your strength training program to be effective. And people want, people want to feel sore. They want to feel beat up. They want to feel like they're, they did something, which is really just a lack of, of discipline or a lack of, of knowledge because you can follow a really well-designed strength training program. And the ones that I design for the runners I work with, I don't want them to be sore from their strength training. I want them to be feeling good for their running. I want them to be feeling fresh for their running. I want their strength work to actually supplement their running. I want it to improve their performance without wrecking their legs or making their legs feel heavy because if your goal is running or if you just enjoy running as a hobby, then you want to make sure that you're showing up your best for running. And a lot of runners don't like the strength training side of things or even the ones that do. Know where your know where your priorities are. If it really is running, then don't follow a strength training program that leaves you sore and beat up that you can't actually do the most important thing, which is running. So keep that in mind. Uh, I said there's other, other podcasts that have addressed this, but I, I can't harp on it enough that you should be feeling fresh and your strength training program should leave you feeling rejuvenated and leave you feeling fresh and not beat up when it's done correctly. Last thing I want to leave you guys with, if you don't know what you're doing, don't try and do it alone. Uh, you can Reach out to us for any help on the programming side of things. You can find a coach in your area, find a trainer who knows what they're doing, who works with runners. If you don't know how to prioritize form, if you don't know what a good program should look like, seek help. It's, it's well worth your investment because I, I know I see it every single day, guys, trust me. Runners, when they suffer an injury, when they start to decline in those areas and they can't, they go from running less mileage to running no mileage. That is hard when running holds so much weight in so many areas of your, your social areas, your mental health and your, your stress, those things that I talked about earlier. Don't wait for something to become a full-blown problem to seek help. Do it now. Be proactive with it. Go get the help you need. Wrapping things up here. If you're a runner, you can't afford not to prioritize your strength training. And if you neglect this area, both your running performance and your longevity is at risk for declining. Instead, Choose, choose the better route. Imagine following a strength training program that actually helps you run faster, feel stronger with your hills, with your speed work, increase your mileage, and doing all of this while you feel your best pain-free, free of any pain, free of any injury. And I know some runners would disagree with this being a possibility, but we see it time and time and time again in the runners that we get to work with every single day. And I know it's possible for you guys as well. So like I said, I hope that helps with the kind of big picture overview of what you need to consider if you're putting together your own program. Now, if you're looking for specific exercises, head to the link. There's a link here in the show notes, the five best strength exercises for runners. Go ahead and check that out. It's a free download for you guys. It talks through, it's got uh, exercises laid out, videos for each one, and uh, gives you guys where you should be feeling it. Kind of will help coach you through that process. So go ahead and check that out. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys listening. Reach out if you need anything, and I'll talk to you soon.